got two lovely chicken breasts and some smoky bacon. We're going to need a chopped onion, so I've done half of it already, but I want to remind you, just to be safe, to cut using a bridge. Make your fingers into a bridge, hold on to the onion, turn it round, and that way there's no risk of you cutting yourself. So that's one onion that's been chopped. We need to snip our lovely chicken breasts into bite-sized pieces. So scissors are really the best way to do this. And he skinned them for us, so we don't have to do that. And I gather they come from Diapers Poultry Farms. So we know exactly where they've come from. And they are local. They're quite big, so you're going to have to cut these into slightly sort of more chunks than I would normally perhaps need. Right, so that's that cut. We've got our cold smoked bacon. And again, I've cut a bit of that, but again, the best way is to use your scissors and just simply snip along there. So you've got little square pieces of bacon. And really the purpose of this is to get some flavour and some of the fat from the bacon as well. So that's that done. Now we're ready to go and start cooking. We're going to use a frying pan that has a lid. If you don't have a pan like this that has a glass lid, any frying pan, any lid will work. It doesn't matter in the slightest. A tablespoon of oil. And then let's get that on and hot. The first thing that's going to go in is the onion. And with that, we're going to also put half a teaspoon of rosemary and fresh is perfect, dried has a slightly more intense flavour and by frying it you bring that flavour out. So we're also going to add the bacon, get that in, starting to sizzle and all of those pieces will separate as we cook the bacon so don't worry if they're stuck together, it doesn't matter in the slightest at all separate out. Keep it moving. Try and break them up as you go. And keep it down from the edges because obviously the heat is at the bottom of the pan. Give it a few minutes just to let the fat come out of the bacon let the onion start to soften and the flavour really develop from the rosemary. You'll get a lovely smell. Now this casserole has beans added to it at the end, cannellini beans, and they're the ones that get used to make baked beans. So they're very high in protein, also very high in fibre. A useful thing to have in your diet and this is a nice way of incorporating them. Right, we're in business starting to happen. Separating as we go. And I do wish it was smelly because it smells lovely. Check your bacon for bones as well. Just be careful. Sometimes if you're buying from the butcher, you might find that this sticky bacon has some small white bones running through it. Just feel it with your fingers to make sure there aren't any. Now that's browning quite nicely, so the next thing to add is the chicken. So you do want the heat quite high. Give it a minute or two to get some colour on one side and then turn it over. If your pan is not non-stick, you'll get lots of brown crusty bits on the bottom. Don't worry about that because towards the end when you give it a really good stir you'll raise all those pieces off the base and that will add to the lovely flavour of the dish. You can see that that's beginning to brown quite nicely now. 
Be careful with chicken, make sure that you do give it long enough to cook. This has a simmering time of 20 minutes and you do need to make sure that it's cooked all the way through. Any pink remaining means it just simply isn't ready. So that's colouring nicely. Turn that piece over. And then the next thing to go in is a little bottle of beer, or it could be wine. It's about 300 mils. If it's a bit more, don't worry, you'll just have more juice at the end. So, there it goes. Let that sizzle up, burn off the alcohol. And when it dies down, we'll add the rest of the ingredients. So now, oh, it smells lovely. In goes a box of tomatoes. Very, very good for you, um, tomatoes. And the more processed they are, the better they are. They're very high in lycopene, which is an anti-carcinogenic. So ketchups, good ketchups, soups, anything with um, tomatoes where they're cooked once or twice even, because obviously these are cooked in this box. We're cooking them again, we're concentrating the lycopene, and it's incredibly good for you. So that's in. And then, because it's tomatoes, half a teaspoon of sugar, just to sweeten them a little bit, they can be very acidic. Half a teaspoon of sugar, and I'm going to season this at the end. So, get a good boil, and then the lid goes on, and we simmer for 20 minutes. So, timer. There we are. And that's our chicken and bean casserole. The beans go in at the very end. Our chicken and bean casserole is cooked, but of course at the moment it doesn't have any beans. So very carefully with the lid off, let the steam fall back in again off your lid if it accumulates. Put that somewhere safely. I've got the cannellini beans, which I've drained. I don't want that juice. In they go. Give it a stir. Just turn it up so that the beans will get heated through. And there we are. That's our chicken and bean casserole. That can be served with crusty bread or with pasta if you want to. And maybe even a green salad as well.